What the heck? Yo! <laughs> Watch the punch! Oh wait! Oh no! Wait! Oh no! Wait! Oh no! Wait! What's up, everybody? My name is William Kwan. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to this video. I don't really have an intro yet. I'll figure that out one day, maybe, hopefully. But welcome to my first video on this channel in an attempt to become a YouTuber. I have plenty of other uploads on this channel before this video, but like. Those are just trying to like, I don't know, upload random stuff. Just like kind of dumping some videos. But like this video, starting starting with this video, I'm like trying to become a YouTuber now. Because um, I really want to become one. I don't have to become like a really popular one. I just want to become a decently popular one. Anyway, um, welcome to my video. And uh, this first video is going to be about Congo Saga. Because so far my audience, I do have like a small audience right now. 2,000 followers on Twitter. Um, 1,000 subscribers so far on YouTube, and they all know me from Super Smash Brothers because I work for 2GG, aka the organization that hosted this event. So I'm going to tell you my experience about Congo Saga from the perspective of one of the staff. Yeah, like, boom, boom, SoCal, SoCal Smash. Also, I'm shooting this on three different cameras right now, this vlog right now. Uh, one is on the Osmo Pocket that I'm, um, I just got recently. I didn't have this in time for Congo Saga, unfortunately. The other ones are my traditional cameras. That is my Canon T5i with a microphone attached to it. And that's my Canon T6. That's a kit lens. That one has like a 50mm prime lens, so I'm sure that one's going to look super good. But I'm using three cameras right now just because I want to see like what looks the finest in this type of video format, I guess. Yeah, I'm just experimenting right now, that's all. Also, that microphone attached to that camera, that didn't arrive in time for Congo Saga either. Like, that microphone and the DJI Osmo Pocket that I'm using right now, like, I ordered both of these during Cyber Monday, and then right after Cyber Monday, like, Congo Saga happened the weekend right after, and then these items shipped to me on Monday. So, like, as soon as Congo Saga ended on Sunday, and then Monday these items came in. So, I, I wish I could have used these items during Congo Saga, but it's fine. Like, I still have plenty of other equipment I could work with, and that's exactly what I did. So, I got all the footage in Congo Saga. I didn't use this microphone and this camera, but that's okay. The, it's a little unfortunate, though, because the audio, the sound quality is super bad. But, I mean, at the same time, that's not also not a big of a deal. is because I didn't really do a lot of talking there either. And that's because, well, I was working the event. I was too busy working to vlog during the event a lot. So, um, yeah. But anyway. But anyway. But anyway. Welcome to my vlog again. It's the vlog. Okay. Do you actually believe that this video will see the light of day and be uploaded? No. See? You guys are watching right now, so that means I made it. <laughs> Alright, what up squad? It's a couple of minutes. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Damn. <laughs> what? 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 Need my intro, bro? <laughs> What's up squad? It's your boy Quan here. A couple minutes before Congo Saga is about to open. You know, pretty empty ass venue out here. Uh, here's Nate. He's, he's uh, doing his like uh, last minute like preparations. He's a stream master, so he gets to like control this shit. The 2GG sagas are a series of major events that 2GG have been hosting ever since the Smash 4 series, and it's been going on into Ultimate as well. Um, they're really stacked most of the time. Uh, this one was an S tier. And the thing that we do for all these sagas is we have a theme. Like for Congo Saga, we brought out Donkey Kong players. K Roll players, Banjo players, Diddy players. And for the last one, Prime Saga, like Metroid Prime, we brought out uh, Samus players, Dark Samus players, Ridley players, Zero Suit players. So that's what we do at Sagas. And there's also a trend that goes on in the Sagas. It's called the 2GG Curse, or Saga Curse, or just the Curse. It's pretty much whoever Saga's theme it is, they will not win the event. Like uh, during Fatality Saga, that was the first Saga ever held in December 2015. I was there. Uh, Fatality got 7th. He wasn't even close to being in Grand Finals, and it only got worse from there as the tournaments got more and more stacked. 
and MK Leo Saga, who's currently the best Super Smash Bros. Ultimate player in the world. We had a saga for him in Smash 4, and he got third place. We had a saga for Zero when he was the king of Smash 4, and he got fifth place, so it's a pretty strong curse. And uh, Kongo Saga was not breaking it anytime soon, because there's no way any Donkey Kong was even going to make it into top 8. Not even a chance. So, like, that was not even a concern, that the saga was going to be... That the saga curse was going to be broken. That, that wasn't even going to happen. Not even by a miracle, that was not possible. But still, like it's still a big tournament. There's talent from all over California, all over the United States, all over North America, it's all over from the world in general. And Congo Saga was an S-tier event. And so far in Smash Ultimate, I believe there's only been six S-tier events, so it was quite a big deal. <laughs> My number one like um, job at these events uh, is to get enough footage, cover the event with my video, cameras and stuff like that. That's what I do. But I usually also have like a secondary role as well because TG is not a big group. Don't like we're only a group of ten people and like a couple of volunteers per event. But the group is only like ten or, or I think even nine people right now. So I usually have like a secondary role at these events. I would be a pool captain if there's not enough volunteers to do those. I would be a bag checker like when we had to up the security and then you know I would I would check your bags and you know see if you had any weapons or anything like that. So for this event I was a stream runner and what the stream runner does is they go around uh, and grab matches from pools and then queue them up for the stream and then make sure that the players are all ready to go so that there's matches on both streams at all times. Uh, I'm not the only one that did that. Myself and another 2GG member, Karch, we both worked as a stream runner, so we, we took turns. Uh, except for the first pool, though. The first wave of singles was so chaotic because doubles had not finished. So the final like uh, teams from doubles, they were still playing their doubles match. And sometimes, um, if they were in like the first wave of pool, like, it would be so troublesome because they couldn't play their singles match because they were still in doubles and i would be like hey i need these guys for a match and then pool captains would be like oh they're not available they're in doubles and i'd be like oh my goodness i need to go look for another match so the first wave of pools singles pools was very chaotic but after that it was it was very mellow smooth um and eventually um karch ended up just taking over completely so that i could focus on just filming the event so thank you karch it's a video. What the hell? Oh, hey. Just like wave, just wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the beginning of day one was pretty rough, just because of uh, stream running was a little crazy. It got better, and then eventually I was just um, recording the event, filming everything, and I gotta say I'm actually pretty happy with how I did, like filming the event. Uh, after day one ended, it ended at like 11 p.m. too. After it ended. I spent a little bit of time making like a day one recap video to use as like an intro to day two of the event. And like when the video was complete, I was actually like really satisfied with the way the video came out. And that's really good for me because this entire year I was in a bit of a stump. Like I wasn't quite sure if my work was like good enough. But honestly, like after I made that video, I was like, you know what? I'm not too bad at the very least. That, that I can say for sure. Like, you know, I'm still not going to call myself like a masterpiece like super pro at everything, all this, but I'm not bad. And I was pretty happy with that. And um, our graphic designer, uh, Sid, she actually tweeted out saying that I spent until like 5 a.m. making this, so you have to check it out. That's not actually true. I didn't spend until 5 a.m. editing that video. Um, I did sleep at 5 a.m. though, and I was editing that video at 5 a.m. But the thing is, like, I wasn't spending the entire time from the end of day one at 11 p.m. through 5 a.m. just making that video. There was a lot of things... That happened. One, I did spend a couple of hours, maybe like two hours, honestly, maybe two, three hours max editing that video. But most of the time, I was just kind of spent partying. Because, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot of our friends from like out of regions that we don't see too often, everyone's here. It was literally everyone is here. So, you know, we do want to spend some time with them. You know, after we're done working the event, you know, I can spend some time just hanging out in their rooms and stuff. So, I was with Sid and also our commentator Strides. We went over to the NorCal room, the Vegas room, and at the end of day two, I even ended up visiting the New York room and just hanging out with everybody there. Sid got lit, so did Strides. They, especially whenever I'm with the Vegas people, like whenever I'm in the Vegas room, they're always offering beers and everyone's always getting drunk. I will not say whether I, or not I got drunk because I'm not 21 yet. I will be very soon, but not quite, so... That's a mystery. It was it was pretty lit. I just can't say if I drank. But yeah, that was uh that was my day one. It was a pretty satisfying day one. 
Uh, but I fell asleep at 5 a.m. And in fact, like the entire our our, our like 2GG like group, me, Sid, and Strides, the ones that ended up like uh, sleeping in the hotel room provided uh, for us by Champ, the owner of 2GG, we all fell asleep at 5 a.m. We we out here. It's like. 5.40 a.m. We finally about to go to sleep because we party animals. <laughs> what? Uh, Alright. <laughs> it definitely is 5.40 a.m. though. So, every time there's an event like this, um, there is like one 2GG room in the hotel for us to just kind of sleep and use. Uh, anyone in 2GG can use it, but most of the time, the 2GG members opt to just go home and sleep in their house because it's usually close by. Uh, but... I take the hotel because I, I don't drive yet and it's quite a hassle for me to go back to my place in LA. It's like pretty far from the venue and by bus it takes over two hours. So I usually always stay in that hotel room. Uh, Strides decide to stay in the hotel room as well. And Sid actually lives in NorCal and she's visiting SoCal. So she stayed in the hotel room as well. Uh, Zfly actually was also going to stay in that hotel room. But when that, what ended up happening was I, I came into the hotel room and I started like editing the video and he woke up and he was like, Quan, are you going to be editing this video all night? And I'm like, uh, I, maybe. I'm not sure yet. And then he was like, okay. And then he packed up his stuff and just left. I'm like, wait, where are you going? I'm like, I'm just going to go home. I'm like, what? Wow. <laughs> I, guess, I guess he's a really light sleeper. So like, like Sid and Strides, I doubt they would like be super bothered by it, but... Z fly, yeah, he would he would wake up pretty easily, so I don't I don't blame him. But dang, he just he he just said I right, I'm gonna head out, and he just dipped, and that that was actually a good idea because me me strides and Sid when we were all in the hotel room like after he left, because those two were still out partying when he left, and I was editing the video. When they came back in, we we didn't sleep. We we were having our own party in that room, <laughs> like again. So uh, yeah, Z fly would not have been able to get any sleep, and he's the MC for our event too, so he needs. To like go out, go on stage and, you know, do all the announcing and stuff on day two. So on day two, he was doing all his stuff. He was like, MK Leo, and he did fine. So he was good. Right day two, when we woke up, we actually didn't realize this, but we heard like Japanese voices coming from next door. It was, it was some of the Japanese players. And it made sense because Champ booked our hotel room and also took care, took care of theirs. So we were right next to each other. We didn't realize that, and we felt bad because we were super loud the night before. But uh, whoopsie! I, I think they did all right at the event, so hopefully it wasn't it wasn't too bad. And another thing is, um, usually when I'm stream running, it's um, what's important about stream running is that you have to make sure that there's always a match on queue. So you gotta like queue things early, but you don't want to queue too much that it delays the pools that they're in. And also, you want to include as many of, like, rare players, I guess. It's not, it's not like it's a Pokemon, but, like, there are players that you don't see too often. Uh, like, the very top players, like Tweak and MKLeo, they go to a lot of events, so they're cool. But I guess, like, character specialists, like Ben Gold, the infamous K. Rool that won a, a major event in Australia, Australia, like, you don't see him too often. So you got to put him on stream. And just players like that. There's even Japanese players that are known to be really good, but you don't see them at, in tournaments too often as well, like Ken and um, Huto, Shogun, Twinkle. Twinkle didn't even make it on stream, actually, and he was the highest placing Diddy Kong at the event, uh, highest placing solo Diddy Kong at the event, since Rivers also used Diddy Kong, but he went crumb, so blah, 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 and all that stuff. How do you guys feel commentating uh, top 128 of Kong or Saga? How's it been so far? Well, now that Sitched over the stream has 18k, I feel a little pressure. What was the best match so far? Shogun, uh... Shogun Santora. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. What was the second best? That was too easy. First one. Tweak Sue. Tweak Sue. Yeah, Tweak Sue. Book show, book show. Alright, I'll leave you You stayed till 5 in the morning. I don't know why she tweeted that. Normally, when I'm stream running, I think I do a pretty good job. Uh, Nightmare on Smashville and Main Stage. That was an A tier, and Main Stage was an S tier event. I stream ran for those as well, and it was fine, honestly, because those events were a little less stacked than Congo Saga, so I had no problem like getting every single like guest out of state guests on stream at least once or at least most of them at least but this one was there were so many you know guests from all over the place and so much talent that i honestly could not 
even get close to trying getting everyone on stream. Even though we had two streams, even though we had two days, like I just couldn't get everyone on stream. But that's okay because that's just how it is at S tier events. There's so many good matches and so many good players. Not everything's going to be on stream. But what was on stream was pretty dang hype. And, you know, at the end of the event, like the event was so well received. The tournament, you know, was complimented for going, you know, for being run pretty well. And the matches, we don't get to control if the matches are super good, right? That just happens by chance. But you know what? At S tier, like the greatest matches come out. And I think there were some hype ass sets this event. Like every time there was like, that was like the best set of the tournament. There will be another set that make you go like, that was the best, that was the best set of the tournament. So there was a lot of hype going on. <laughs> Everyone enjoyed the event, everyone enjoyed the games, and overall, it was just a good event. And I'm glad to have been uh, part of like running the event. Running it was super fun for me, and I made it fun for others, and that's what matters. And then I, I did my job correctly, and then. Uh, anyway, Strides, what did you think of uh, Congo Saga? It was cool. I like, I'm glad there was Leo versus Tweet. And uh, this guy got top 8 somehow, even though League sucks. Ooh, top eight boys. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Bro. All right, so I'm almost done editing this video. It's like 4.07 a.m. right now, and this video is like long overdue, but I just got to this footage of all these Japanese players on a bus, and I realized I forgot to talk about that, so I'm going to talk about it real quick. All right, so after every time we're done running a big event like this, uh, Champ takes all of us uh, 2GG members out to Korean barbecue to celebrate successfully running another tournament. And uh, he also usually brings the Japanese guests with us because, you know, they came all the way from Japan for our event. So, you know, we like them. So usually it's like us 2G members and Japanese players. We go to K-BBQ. But this time the group of Japanese players that came here for this event was so huge that like we couldn't just fit them all in our cars. So Champ just straight up <laughs> got a shuttle from the hotel to put them all in there. And they needed one person from one of us to like stay with them so they don't like just get lost uh so champ made me go with them so i was like uh okay so i was just in this shuttle with all the japanese players i don't speak japanese i'm asian but i'm korean i'm the i'm like literally one country below so uh, i was just sitting there you know just minding my own business like it's not like i could even talk to them I was getting, it, it was getting a little awkward for me because I didn't want to just like be there. You know, I don't want to make a bad impression on them either. Um, but luckily, Sue was, I was sitting next to Sue and then, um, you know, Sue's cool. So I like turned to him and I started, you know, talking to him in English a little bit. And, you know, his English isn't like the best, right? But he can still like have a basic conversation. I can't have any basic conversation in Japanese. So, you know, this is, this is the only option. So, you know, Sue was cool enough to like talk with me throughout the rest of the ride and then, uh, you know, it wasn't as awkward. Everyone, everyone got to the K barbecue safely, and we all had some good ass Korean barbecue, and it was a good night. Uh, thank, shout out to Sue though for having that conversation with me. Otherwise, I would have felt really awkward. Good thing I didn't. Thank you, Sue.